Now there's a notorious kind of sentence that's very difficult to translate into FOL, sometimes called the donkey sentence. This was revived in the 20th century by the logician Peter Geech, although we actually owe it to a much older text by a medieval logician named Walter Berlin. In Geech, this sentence takes the following form. Every farmer that owns a donkey eats it. The original in Burley is omnis homo habens asinum vidit uh, Every person who owns a donkey sees it. I prefer sees to beats for obvious reasons. We're going to take a look at what makes this sentence so tricky and how, by being careful, we can get it right. So consider the sentence, everyone who owns a donkey sees it, and try using our earlier method to translate this into FOL. So we would say everyone and some, the a uh is a some, or so it appears, although we're going to see pretty soon that it's not. Now for the sake of perspicuity, we're going to just translate everyone as every person. We'll say y is a donkey and x owns y. So here's our first crack at this, and unfortunately it's wrong. We can see this if we notice that the y here is only bound within these parentheses, and so its occurrence here is unbound. Now you might think, oh, well, then the solution is just to place new parentheses around it so as to bind it. So here we have every variable within the scope of our quantifiers, and we have our existential sentence right here at the end. For the sake of saving space, I'm writing person as P, donkey as D, owns as O, and C's as S. But this sentence says something quite different from what we want it to. As an exercise, I would encourage you to pause the video for a moment and think about what this sentence actually says and why it is not equivalent with everyone who owns a donkey sees it. The problem here is that what this actually says is that everything in our domain is a person and something in our domain is a donkey and everything sees it. Actually, this entails that a person is a donkey, since if everything in our domain is a person and something in our domain is a donkey, then there's some overlap between the two. So this is really not what we want to say. Okay, well, we've seen enough universal sentences to know that we're supposed to read them as conditionals to avoid this problem. So maybe we should write it like the following. Now, this may look closer to what we want, but it actually is also flawed. And it's a little trickier to see why. But we can get at the problem with this if we consider what this antecedent to our conditional says, which is that everything is a donkey owning person. So what this really says is that if everyone owns a donkey, then they see it. And that's not what this sentence up here says. Our original sentence doesn't suggest that everyone owns a donkey, but that at least some people own a donkey. And of those, all of them see it, see the donkey they own. So this sentence also, while intuitively more appealing than the one immediately above it, is wrong. Okay, enough of the wrong ones, let's get to the right one. The way to approach this problem is to look at our original sentence and paraphrase it in a way that's easier to translate. So we say, every donkey, if it's owned by someone, is seen by them. Now the interesting thing is that this way of writing it reveals that we actually have two universal quantifiers, which is every donkey, and our a uh here is translated as every person who owns it. So what this says then is that for every donkey, if a person owns it, then that person sees it. And there you go. This is the correct way to translate our donkey sentences, and it has the same truth conditions as our sentence up above. Namely, everyone who owns a donkey sees it.